while Jesus told this parable to the scribes and the Pharisees, Jesus had a context at the back of his mind. And the context was, it was considered during the Old Testament time that if you are rich and you have material prosperity, it is considered to be the blessings of God. God is smiling on you. So material prosperity, riches, and wealth were symbols of the blessings of God. But all the same, the people forgot that the very Old Testament in the book of Amos that we heard today condemns the very rich people on two accounts. Number one is their unfair means of acquiring the wealth that they have. And secondly, when they have acquired wealth, when they have become rich, they have forgotten the poor. The second background, second thing at the back of the Jesus' mind in telling this parable is that because people considered wealth and riches and the prosperity as blessings of God, they, these wealth, material wealth and the prosperity needs to be enjoyed. One needs to enjoy one's own wealth that is at his or her disposal. And they considered that those people who were poor and the sick, they were poor and sick because it was the curse of God on them. It is in this context that Jesus is trying to explain to them the parable of the rich man and the Lazarus. The parable of the rich man and the Lazarus takes us back to the very book of Genesis, wherein God comes to Cain after killing his brother Abel and asks him this very question, where is your brother? Where is your brother? And what was the reply of Cain? Am I the keeper of my brother? The very implicit answer in the question of God was, yes, indeed. You are the keeper of your brother, and therefore I am asking you this very question, where is your brother? The parable today leads us to this question. Are you rich? Do you have material wealth and prosperity? If yes, God is asking you this question. Do you know where is your brother? What's, what is your response to this question? Is your response to God like that of Cain who said, am I the keeper of your brother, of my brother? Or am I going to ask the question that was addressed to Jesus, who is my neighbor? In the context of today's gospel, who is my brother? Do we want to be reminded by Jesus about the parable of a good Samaritan? Now, when Jesus tells this parable about the rich man, Jesus does not condemn the rich, riches. Wealth and prosperity are not bad. But when the riches, wealth, and prosperity take over the human heart and close in our hearts and minds to our neighbors and to our brothers and to our sisters who are in need, it is there the greatest danger of the power of the wealth lies. The wealth has the power to control every human heart. And it is this fact that Jesus is pointing to. Do not allow your material wealth to take control of your heart in such a way that you forget your God, 
that you forget your own brother and your own sister. Jesus wants to remind us of the one fact that Job remembered all the time in his life, whether he was rich or poor. When he lost his everything, he said, Naked did I come from my mother's womb, naked will I return. It is God who gave, it is God who take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Who, who here was born with all the riches that we have today? Who of us was born with all the things and positions that we have? All of us were born naked, like that of Job. Who of us is going to take what we have and what we possess today, other than our good deeds? Nobody would ever take what you have or what you possess today or whatever you value the most in your life. We are going to leave everything back here. The gospel passage reminds us today also of the fact that one day we would be standing before our God who created us. The rich man was in the torments indicating that he was in the fire of hell and Lazarus was in heaven at the bosom of Abraham clearly indicates that there is heaven and there is hell there is reward and there is punishment after hereafter so how do you and I have access to heaven in the gospel of Saint Matthew again when I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, you visited me. And I think in the, in the final analysis, this is what is going to stand by us. Let's ask ourselves, what do I do for my brother or my sister who is in need. Amen.